Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Jerusalem Connection Red Alert Report. I'm Amy Zawi, and today we have extremely special guests, Israelis, Jill and Amnon Damti, and they are phenomenal human beings. They have an organization called Two Worlds Dance, and I'm going to let them explain that to us. And they are also the ambassadors of Israeli culture, culture and acceptance, and I'm also going to let them explain that to you. They are in California at the moment. Um, they have family and loved ones in Israel, so we'll also get into a little bit about how they're feeling about what's going on at the moment in Israel. But first, I just want to say welcome Jill and Amnon, we are so happy to have you here. And I really want to share or have you share your story because I was so excited to meet you and learn about what you do a couple of weeks ago when you were visiting DC and sharing your Two Worlds Dance program with us. Jill, welcome, Hi. Amnon, welcome. And, and please tell us about yourselves and share with us what you do. Okay, so first of all, I'll be speaking English. Uh, my name is Jill Damti Feingold. This is Amnon Damti, uh, my partner in life and my partner in dance. And Amnon was born deaf. And uh, I'm signing, but my sign language is in Hebrew, so everything is sort of upside down. <laughs> Amnon actually knows American sign language, which I don't know, which is strange because uh, I'm speaking uh, English, but I'm signing in Hebrew. So... Amazing. Amon was Amon was born a uh, deaf, and we came at the age of at the age of ten. From the age of five till fifteen, he was in an institution for the deaf in Jerusalem. But he was very closed in, and he always uh, wanted to be a dancer. And when he was ten years old, he saw on the television Bolshoi Ballet, and said, "That's what I want to do." But thought that he wouldn't be able to because he was deaf and he can't hear the music. So then he joined in a group called Silence and they changed it to a group called Sound and Silence. And he was their solo dancer there for many years. They were very known. Like those days, it was like Bacheva dance group, Sound and Silence. And I was born in America, in Portland, Oregon, but I grew up in Israel most of my life. And my parents were American, Jewish, and they moved to Israel. How you say, you say Aliyah. If you, you know what that means? Yes, we know what that means. But they moved to Israel back and forth at least three or four times, so they couldn't decide. But I uh, became Israeli already at the age of eight. I spoke fluent Hebrew. I became totally Israeli. And the way of uh, my life uh, with movement was gymnastics. I was a gymnast, and I did water ballet. And when I had met Amnon, I started to study film. So when he left his group where he was a solo dancer, he said, let's create Two Worlds Dance. So this is more than 30 years ago. And we called it Two Worlds because Amon came from dance and I came from water ballet and I worked with dolphins for many years, which, by the way, this is my sign name in sign language, That's dolphin. Beautiful. And uh, we created this special dance performance that has been running and running and running for more than 30 years all over Israel, all over the world, but also um, it, it's evolved, it's changed as we all change. And, but it, it brought our two worlds into, into all schools, into disabled. And Amnon said he has this mission because he was so closed in as a child and everywhere he goes in the world and in Israel, of course, we live in Israel. Um, he wants every disabled child and specifically maybe deaf because he was born deaf to see that nothing in the world has to stop them. So he's sort of like a, an inspiration. So when, and you saw the, you saw the video on Africa that when we traveled to Africa, we tra traveled everywhere to reach deaf children. So, and I'll share, I will share that link so that our audience can see that same video. And um, I also want our audience to know that not only do you travel around and perform together, um, in, a lot of people don't realize that Amnon is deaf, correct, when they, and he performs, and he has won many, many awards, dancing. Yes, awards. yes, yes. He's won many, many awards 
uh, alone and together. We've danced at the White House together. We've danced all over. And he's won a lot of awards. And when we danced at Sigurdstorm, which is here in, Ir in Irvine, there were like 2,500 people in the audience and no one knew that he's deaf. They did know that we're from Israel because that I heard them announcing that, but we were dancing, you know, with uh, the symphony behind us and no one knew that he can't hear the music, which is quite amazing. Mm -hmm. So, and, and, you know, a while ago in Israel, we were on television and before we got on television, they always interview us, you know, for the, for the background. So the interviewer asked me on the phone about Amnon's uh, childhood and background. And so I'm, and I'm interpreting for Amnon, he said, and he says, like, uh, no, nothing, nothing's regular, regular childhood. So what are you talking about? <laughs> you were born to people that came from Yemen Jews, and they hardly spoke Hebrew, and they sent you away to an institution with death. You became a dancer. You're a worldwide dancer. What do you mean nothing special? <laughs> so to him, like, it's uh, normal, and it's like we have two children, and our son, every child in Israel at the age of 13 has to write, like, a, a big essay that's called Roots. Hmm. So they have to dig into their roots, like on mother's father's side and mother's side and and our son, his name is Kai. I named him Kai because I wanted to look for like an international sound and I like the sound. And uh, he's, a, he's in neuroscience, by the way, now. Wow. And so he said, I don't know what to write. There's nothing uh, special, like Amnon said. You know, I said, what are you talking about? Your mother worked with dolphins, came from America with six siblings. Your father, his parents came from me. I mean, he was born there. If he's one of the best step dancers in the world. I made up your name, Kai. You have a lot of things to write about. So it should be a beautiful essay. And incidentally, I will also share with the audience um, the Jerusalem Post article that was uh, written, I think, in 2021. And that was sort of a broad overview of both your backgrounds. And I will share that with our viewers, the link, so they can find it and read more about your. Um, it just, it's such a rich background full of both tragedy and triumph. So, so it's interesting that, that this, this story of the roots that I have, it, you know, it's a little book. Uh, when our daughter had to do the, her roots, so she just <laughs> copied everything, you know. <laughs> so and, I'm reading, like... <laughs> and I'm reading like I'm reading, and it says, uh, when I was eight months old, I could use sign language. And then I spoke when I was a year old, you know, she copied what he had. I said, that's me, that's not you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, same, same family, same story, a little slightly different perspective as far as each child. And your daughter's younger, I'm assuming. Yes. So she's, she's five years younger. They were both born on uh, Passover evening, wow. five years apart, which is pretty special. And I happened to give birth in, in Tel Aviv at a at a religious hospital just because I heard the staff is very good there. So uh, they were both called like uh, sacred uh, babies because they were born on Passover night. So that was special. Too. Very special. It's like all the stars are aligning just for yeah. you guys. So as you take your um your 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 two worlds method um with both your hearts um, trying to reach into communities of uh, mostly children, but their families and connect to the deaf community. I know you did a lot of work at Gallaudet in Washington, DC, as well as other, you mentioned earlier um, before we started recording that you're working with some children with cancer right now. So you use your method to, to draw out, um, or at least you can, expand on this, but to draw out these children's personalities, these stories, and give them a feeling of you are capable of whatever you put your mind to and will, and we're going to help you get there. And that is such a beautiful thing um, for each each child and, and their family members to watch and, and participate in. Do you want to share one or two stories of of groups that you worked with or even individuals that you worked with where you used your method and your dance and your entire skill set and, and your passions and your art to work with these children and bring light into their lives. 
Thank you. Yes. So first of all, we didn't know that we actually have a method. It's just that <laughs> we always, in our characters, we always find found ways to, to do inclusiveness. I'm just taking a picture. Okay. <laughs> so it was very, uh, let's do our hair thing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, in both of our, in both of our characters, <laughs> I'm say there's a lot of light here in the, on the screen. So in both of our characters, um, not with nothing to do with each other, we both have the feeling that always, when I met Amnon, I noticed that he treats every human being the same. Like he could speak to someone who's cleaning the streets and speak to like a prince that we met in a country the same way. And this is, this is not just saying it. It's actually, he, he actually relates to everyone in the same way to him, everyone is equal. And I noticed that right away. And I'm the kind of person that always, I, from a very early age, I volunteered at different places. And I always could see everyone and notice that if someone was out there and not part of, I, I used to teach jazz dance and different, and swimming. So I noticed that if someone was out there, I want them here with us. So I always noticed that. And when we started working together and giving workshops, um we there for instance there was one time we were giving a workshop at a at a school that was very uh i i don't want to use the word poor but they didn't have uh, resources so um amnon was teaching them like a bar class you know when there's a there's a bar not a bar a bar yeah <laughs> bar. Yeah. Bar. yeah and but they we didn't we didn't have a bar so he took the chairs and he had them stand behind the chairs. So the chair, the back of the chair is like the, where you hold the bar. It took him a long time to explain, don't sit on the chair, stand behind <laughs> it. And I saw far away, there was a kid and I noticed that in, he was in a wheelchair and he had a hearing aid. So I understood that he can't hear. And I told his aide, bring him up close. And he said, ah, oh, he can't hear. I said, what? <laughs> oh, so I can't hear, bring him up close. So he can at least feel the vibrations. And then he was he was put up close. And I did one small thing. He he couldn't move his hands, he couldn't move his legs. And I brought his the chair to him and I took his hand and I put his hand on the back of the chair. And he lit up. He was part of the class. Just something so small. And then I brought him into the circle when we created a dance. And he was like the sunflower. He was like the center of the circle. And when I asked the kids to hold his hand, most of the kids were deaf there. When they held him here, I said, no, hold him and like a friend hand. And he was so happy. He was so happy. And then when we left that day, we had taught them shalom, the word shalom. So shalom means uh, hello, goodbye, and peace. And nobody there was Jewish, so nobody knew the word. And I taught them the word shalom. And this is the sign. So as we were walking out, he like, he could hardly move, but he like, he was trying to put his hands together to do the word shalom. And it was so touching. Eight-year-old kid. After a few uh, weeks, uh, he didn't come up to show, to the showcase and he had passed away. Oh. So I wrote a, I wrote a poem in his name, a beautiful poem about this whole event and how we smiled and he was part of our flower and he was the center of his flower and they had interpreted um, for his funeral they interpreted into Spanish and they read the poem there so that's beautiful that was it and and another story is uh we when we we were artists in residence at a place called OC Music and Dance which were like um they used to have like uh one a few kids coming in but when we came in we brought in everyone we brought in israelis and dancers and deaf people and uh therapists and we sort of created a family without even knowing that we're doing that and then uh the first day we all met up there's like a coffee shop on the second floor and there was this one kid um that very tall he was 14 years old and he he um started asking people for money so i asked him i said you can't ask for money i said are you hungry this is hungry in american sign language and he said yes yes so i brought him amnon brought us sandwiches and salad so 
he just he was starving you know he was a teenager growing up and what happened with this kid was every day there was a change he didn't even want to be there by the way because the principal of the school said don't bring him because he's 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 juvenile delinquent and he says he won't fit in and i said that's exactly the reason he has to be here <laughs> and also he didn't have language because they came from mexico so he didn't his English wasn't very good and his sign language wasn't very good. And so, but every day, like there was a change. The second day he would come in with a cap and Amnon said, take off your cap, you know? And he said, no, I'm ugly. And Amnon said, no, no, take it off. And then he came up to Amnon and Amnon combed his hair and we all said, you're so beautiful. Like the third day he came and he said, um, I don't want to take my shoes off because I have holes in my socks. I'm shy. And we were laughing because the dancers always have holes in their socks. It's like, cool, it's the thing, you know? And so he took off and then he started dancing with Amnon. And like the third, fourth day he came in and he had like a really swollen hand because he was nervous at, at home, at, at school and he hit, a, he hit a tree. So when he came into us, he was nervous and Amnon put some ice on it and he said, come dance with us. And then we let him sleep on the studio floor so when one of the dancers that's not part of our program walked in, she said, why, why is the kid sleeping on the floor here? That's not a studio for dance. I said, yeah, he'll sleep on the floor here and he's not outside. He's with us, you know, and people didn't get the, the vibe that, you know, that's very open and very flexible. And then I was going to tell his mother that he's hungry, you know, so I said, um, Every day Amnon was making like sandwiches and bring him. And we noticed that he put some sandwiches in his bag and he was he was starving, you know. First of all, teenagers are starving, you know. So to begin they're always with, starving. Yeah. And um, so I was walking downstairs to tell his mother that was going to pick him up to make him some sandwiches or food. And as I'm about to walk out, one of the secretaries at the center, which is like our home now, because we have our picture on the wall and we're partners there and we're like, we created something that suddenly the whole neighborhood was coming to this place that was like one and one people were coming in. So I walk outside and she's telling me his mother's out there and and I said, um, I'm going to tell her to bring some food for him. And she said, you know that when they came from Mexico, they were four people, they lived in the car for two years. Oh, wow. No, I didn't know that. So I walk out to the car and she's she's nervous because I'm walking out. And she asked me, are you mad at him? Because he punched the tree that day and the school called him. I said, no, 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 we love we love him. I just ca came to say hello. And the, her little baby was in the car. And what happened was every day there was like a metamorphose, like, the last day we did a beautiful showcase and he walked in. We didn't recognize him. He wore a ponytail like Amnon. No. <laughs> to be just like Amnon, right? He, to he be put like on glasses, even though he doesn't need glasses. He wore all black and he came in and we didn't recognize him. Wow. And not only was he part of the program, I forgot to tell you so many details, but he was so <laughs> nervous and he couldn't relax and and he did the relaxation with us. And then he stood in front of like 200 people and he showed them the shalom and he closed his eyes. Now, for deaf people to close their eyes, it's not simple because they can't, they use their eyes to see the signing. Mm -hmm. And it was like, and then I came up to his parents and they said, not only did you change his life, you gave all of us hope, the whole family. And last year, the whole family joined our group everyone including that little baby that was in the car that i just fell in love with her that now she's uh, six or seven wow so they're all part of this so we didn't know that we have like a method but we were asked to write down everything and then we read the second and then i told him to bring the book so we can show it and then we wrote the book so we wrote it in english and then we translated it into hebrew and now it's uh, been translated into chinese or mandarin wow. Yes, because the the head of this OC Music and Dance is from China, and he wants to bring us to China. So um, if you don't have enough time for us to talk about what happened on, on October 7th, maybe you want to add some time? No, we so can add time. I definitely wanted to um, 
to go over that because you're explaining. because I have so, I have so many stories right. and there's so I many and I have the that... benefit I have the benefit of our time together when you visited DC I think we were together um oh the it looks beautiful the book so I just want everybody to know I'm going to put the website um in our notes and on the screen for you to contact Jill and Amnon learn more about these programs and and how you can invite them to your community and also learn more about how they're creating a framework so that if if they come to your community and they start a program it can be carried on with um instructors or volunteers that are trained to to take that method or process or whatever word we want to call yeah. it I don't know. Um, <laughs> the word process is a good word because we're also in the understanding of how to do it because we we also knew, we always knew that we could see people and bring them in. And Amnon's very, very talented at like creating a choreography from people that don't even know how to dance. So we told you that story of Esme. Yes. Maybe we'll share that if we have enough time. Mm -hmm. And um, the one that in yeah. did. Yeah. So, so Amnon has this ability to take somebody from where they're at with their abilities, their physical abilities, um, as probably as well as their emotional abilities and draw out um, or create a choreography that works with where they're starting from. And, and exactly. For instance, we work with ch children with autism in Israel. And uh, one of the kids always held something like a, like something in her hand, you know, she had to hold it all the time. And uh, her mother said, you know, you could train her to, to take it down. And we said, no, 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 we'll, We'll take that and we'll create like a fan or maybe flamenco or something, you know. Or um, we had a kid that joined us that had, he was deaf and also autistic. And his mother had said, he's not accepted anywhere because the deaf community doesn't accept him because of his autism. And and the autistic the community doesn't accept him because of the deafness. Anyway, so he joined us. And when one when, when kid was doing like a space dance, he started he started making noises like, doo -doo 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 -doo, you know, and so his aide was saying, Shh, sh. I said, no, no, this is perfect. Like it's, the accompaniment, it, right? It fits yeah. in with the, with the space thing. It's perfect. So, yeah, exactly. We'll so you, find, you we'll always find these little, things. yeah, you take these personality traits and these abilities, I'm going to call them disabilities, I'm going to call them what they can do, and hold exactly. the dance and the storytelling around it so that child or, or young adult even just really gets to be a part of the experience and and it does it draws them out it gives them a sense of value and an inclusion um to use that word and 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 share in an art form that they may not have been exposed to or even ever thought they could participate in so yeah and, and we all we all have something to learn and to teach and when we started, when we started the program, the kids, the young, younger kids that are hearing, they called me Miss Jill. Miss, and I said, no, no. I said, you're not, you're just calling me Jill. And she said, why? And I said, because I can teach you and you can teach me. We're all, we all have something to learn from each other. That's beautiful. So, yeah. So let's, um, you know, I, I want to give resources to our audience members. They can learn more about what you do and and um, and share videos going, you know, back many years that you've been developing these these processes and these trips that you go around the world and and do your your programs with children of a variety of abilities. But let's bring this up to ten months ago, because you were in Israel in October of 2023. And you had some things on your schedules. Um, why don't you tell us the story of what was going on in early October in your lives, the decisions that you made last minute, where you're going to travel to and when, and then what unfolded um, from the 7th and, and the few days therein. And because our, our community is um, very interested in, in hearing people's stories, learning people's stories of their experiences so that we can continue to pray and uh, support you in, in that time afterwards. First of all, I'm so honored for this. I had no idea that there were these communities that support us uh, because all I see and I try not to watch it, you know, on the media is like all the anti, anti, anti. But whenever I see something anti, I just, I don't give it that energy. I just look for the good stories. 
Um, so because we've been ambassadors of culture and acceptance for Israel for the past, formally for the past like eight to 10 years before we also did it, but uh, afterwards they called us because what they saw was that places that don't know of Israel, um, instead of speaking politics, they can bring art. And also it's beautiful because there's, because Amon was born, what's called disabled and became very abled. Mm -hmm. And so, um, and it's also very easy to bring us because we're not a huge group and it's the two of us. And we tell our story when we go around the world and we also do workshops. So um, October 5th, I got a phone call from New Zealand that we're going, uh, we're flying there to perform for the deaf community, for the Maori uh, tribe. And for other communities, uh, there's a lot of Christian communities in um, New Zealand, very little Jewish community. Mm. And this is why the reason that they wanted to bring us for the support of Israel. And um, they worked on it very hard, the embassy there, the Israeli embassy. They worked on it like for months. And I got this phone call on the 5th of October that we're flying October 10th. And on Sunday, October 8th, she's going to buy the tickets to El Al and we're flying. So I was all excited because we kept these days open to fly for like about three weeks and perhaps to Australia afterwards. But Australia wasn't very organized because, you know, it's a huge country. So it was sort of spread out, but they were very closed on it. And, and then I got a phone call on the evening of October 5th to come to Kibbutz Berry for the weekend of the 6th and the 7th of October that they're celebrating. Um, and they want to give us a uh, like honorary thing for our um, con contrib contribution because every, every time there's missiles and there's war, um, we, we, yeah, we, I'm, I'm trying not to use the word war because before it wasn't called war. It was, it was, it was just sort of those random attacks, right? Those yeah, attacks, attacks. Thank you. Yeah. The attacks, uh, we always volunteer to come and perform in the shelters, uh -huh. which is always interesting because our music has a lot of bass in it. So Amnon can feel it. Mm -hmm. But in the shelters, we notice that it, it scares them. The bass scares them because they're so oversensitive. Right. So we do a lot of fun stuff and pantomime and very light stuff. Mm -hmm. But they wanted to honor us. And also we have family and friends there and all the kibbutzim and um, Yad Mordechai, which is also not far from there, um, also always invites us. We were there this last Passover, by the way. And so they said, come for the weekend, Shishi Shabbat, uh, sleep here. We'll have Friday night dinner and then Shabbat, October 7th in the morning at 10, we'll give you a tour of the gallery and we want to honor you. You know, it wasn't anything like official, but it was, we spoke to our friends there. And also we have a distant family that lives there. Also our daughter in her army service uh, four years ago was on the border of Gaza as a, an observer. Mm. And she did what happened to many of the, hostages and killed women that they were they were on the border of Gaza looking into Gaza to see that people won't come in. So she's quite traumatized, I must say, of I course, like the whole of the country. Anyway, so I was all excited and I'm very adventurous and also and I said to Amnon, okay, we're going for the weekend, sixth, seventh of October to sleep there. And he said, Are we performing? Because we perform a lot. And I said, No. They want to spoil us. They want to spoil us because everything we've done. But I know he loves galleries. So I said, but Saturday morning, we're invited to the gallery, to a tour of the gallery there in Berry. And so I said, you know what? We'll sleep at home. And then Saturday morning, we'll drive. We'll leave at nine in the morning and we'll be there. It's only like an hour away, you know, from Tel Aviv. So that maybe saved our lives, as we all know. Because October 7th, I woke up with my heart pounding at 6.30 in the morning. The siren was so hard. I had no idea what was going on. I had um, no idea that I had to go to the shelter. I, but 
almost until now, 10 months later, I'm waking up at 6.30 in the morning with heartbeats. And by the way, when we came into New York a month ago and we slept in the city and uh, I fell asleep, there was like a, not a siren, like an ambulance. Mm -hmm. And I woke up and I was looking for the shelter and nothing is normal about that, of course. <clears throat> and um, then I started seeing and hearing of <clears throat> what's going on, like all of the country and our friends were murdered and um, from the gallery. And the other friend that invited us physically to do the tour was one of those stories that she's holding the door of the... The shelter, the bum shelter. The shelter of, and, you know, for 17 hours with two little kids there. And just, I it's 10 months later and nothing is, nothing sounds, it doesn't sound like it's a, a real world. It still sounds like a nightmare. And then... Um, we were shocked like everybody else. And the next day we got a phone call to please come to the kids that are evacuated from Beiri and from all the kibbutzim and all the Sderot and all the cities in the area. They're evacuated to the Dead Sea. So we just, uh, we drove down. And at this point we understood that nothing is, you know, everything is canceled, of course, New Zealand and everything else. And, um, then I was I was connecting to someone in New Zealand, one of the deaf people. They were they were admiring Amnon that he's coming to because he's very known in the deaf world. And I said, you know, we're in war. We we can't come. So she writes to me. She's deaf. She writes to me. Oh, tell your government to stop bombing in. Uh, and I, you know, this is when I started getting all defensive and not understanding how the world can tell us not to. Protect ourselves. Defend yourselves, right, and your people. And and so so we drove down, and we couldn't stay in the hotels because they were totally full. Mm -hmm. Luckily, we have a, a lot of friends because we traveled so much, so we slept at friends' house. But all of our friends, you know, their families were murdered and held hostage, and everybody was like, you couldn't breathe. You could not breathe because you... Never in your life would you think that something like this could happen. Mm -hmm. Dragging people out of their beds and what they had done. I, I I can't watch any of those videos. I can't because I watched one one night and it wasn't even violent. It was just like a little kid shouting, why are they shooting at us? What did we do? And just that, I couldn't sleep for weeks and weeks and weeks just from that. And... And we're Amnon and I are part of a foundation called Freedom Writers Foundation. Do you know them? I know. I've heard of it. Yeah. So there's a thousand teachers worldwide, and we're the Israeli ones. Oh, wow. And we're invited a lot. So I explained to them, and I said to them just a while ago, I said to them, you know, I we, we wish, wish peace on all. We don't wish uh, any of the Palestinians that are innocent in Gaza. And the army has done so much to try and evacuate them Safely. so they won't get hurt. You have to, I said, you have to understand these are the terrorists that are attacking the people and they want to kill as many Jews and not only Jews, as we know, Christians and Muslims and everybody. We know that in Majd al a while ago, it killed 12 Druze children that were playing soccer. I, I like, I can't believe it, you know? No. And, um, the world is upside down when they can't see it for what it is. It's I know, and that, so that's that why we want you to know that there's hundreds of thousands and millions of Christians and people who aren't Christians that that are they sift through the media gunk and they know what the truth is. But one of the ways we do that well, is to have people tell their story. So, so when we came down. And I was very nervous to see these kids that had just gone through the worst thing imaginable. And I felt, I felt like I was in the Holocaust. And I am allowed, I, I can say that because I spoke to people that were in the Holocaust and they said, this is not different. The feeling is not different. Mm -hmm. And so we're dancing to a group from Be'eri and two more kibbutzim from the area. And we're dancing at the Dead Sea. We were hosted by the kibbutz and Gedi, which is in the Dead Sea, mm -hmm. and and we're dancing. And there's the families, and I I'm looking at kids, and I, and they're very close, and I'm very 
but they're suddenly they're opening up, opening up like you can see it physically. They're, they're opening up slowly, like physically, and then they're starting to join us. And after we did a dance of about an hour with a lot of participation, the kids start coming up to us. So first of all, Amnon's a very uh, talented uh, artist. So we, I tell them bring papers because he want they wanted um, autographs. So I said ask ask for an animal or something. So so the kids, all these kids that were the, the worst trauma of all, are standing in line and they're asking Amnon. Draw me a bull that will protect me and keep me strong. So he's drawing. Draw me a, a bird that will take me far away. And they're like, and it was very, very therapeutic for all of us. And then he starts giving dance class, like throwing the kids and the parents. And this little girl comes up to me and she says to me, I saw my parents being shot. Like, I'm, and I'm interpreting to Amnon and like, I'm, and her aunt is there, and her aunt tells me, thank God she's seven years old because she could write to me on the phone because I didn't want her to speak on the phone, and I told her to hide in the closet. And she hid in the closet for hours and hours and hours and hours, and she shared with me that she was so shy that she had to pee in her pants because she couldn't go to the toilet. That was, that like, that was like the moment of trauma for her as a seven-year-old I assume she didn't know what was going on with her parents. I don't know. And then, but she's sharing with us, and her aunt is telling me this is the first time she's speaking. Like we're a day and a half after. She didn't speak to the psychologist. She didn't speak to me. Her aunt said something in the dance and the sign language and the drawing and the energy in the stu in the room. Something allowed her to open up, and she was talking to me and telling me. And I can't, I can't breathe. I'm feeling like I'm being shot, and I'm, and I'm looking at this kid now. She has her aunt, thank God. But to go through this, oh my God! And then I tell her, go dance with Amnon, and I say to her, put your phone down. And I'm thinking, you know, the phone saved her life. She's not leaving the phone; it's glued to her. And we started hearing all these stories, more and more and more stories, and. I am super, super empathetic. I don't know if, if that's the right word, but I took like the stories. I, I couldn't. Personally, I could yeah. Yeah. And also because I felt that we were almost there and we were saved, you know, because we should have been there, but we weren't. And also uh, my mother was married the second time, a second time and her son, her partner's son, is from Barry, so part of their family was murdered. And and until now, we have friends that are held hostage. So I'm, of course, wearing this all the time, and so many people have no idea. So when we were in New York, um, I met with a, an international lawyer. Did I tell you this? Mm -hmm. I, should I share with you about sure. it? Yes. So we... Mm -hmm. Uh, I'm not said to talk about the Caesarea, bring them home. So I'll tell it in a minute. So, uh, oh, so I'll tell that. So for for three months we were volunteering everywhere, and then I said to Amnon, you know, we have to work. We have we have two kids; they're grown, but we have to live. We have so we started working, but then we were we had got a phone call to join a thousand musicians to do the, oh, the music yeah. concert, Habita. Do you have that? Do you yeah, well, to I'll, that? I'll insert the link, and so that everybody can remember. When it first came out, we posted it on our on our socials. The big music. Um, I forgot the name of the location, but it's like the ruins. The it's a Caesarea, Caesarea. in Caesarea. Caesarea. Yes, and I, which I've been there, as a matter of fact, years ago. But it it's a stirring with the drummers yeah. and the singers, yeah. and then so, you were the interpreters, right? You yeah. Were so no, actually. Actually, we were brought originally to to oh, dance, man. to dance with the signing, a bite to, to so they built us a little stage, and we were going to stand there. But so we worked on the dance and with not interpreting, doing full dance and with the signing. But then, and 
they brought in the families of the hostages, so they had to walk through the mm -hmm. stage. So they told us to move to the side. So we just did just the signing, which Amun said, let's go home because we don't need to just sign. But then the singers behind us said, no, it's so inspirational, just the signing. So we stayed and we're glad we stayed yeah. because it was very, very powerful. That was about four months ago. Yeah. Yeah. I remember when that came out, I had a lot of people send it to me. So I'm going to include that in our notes. It's it's beautiful. Um, and I'll put the minute marker because they do flash. They do flash the camera on you. Yeah. <laughs> so I'll put the minute marker on that. So, so originally mm -hmm. when we did like a full dance, it was a, a full uh, um, camera on us. But then it changed. Anyway, that doesn't matter. That's not the point. But I wanted to tell you that when we were in New York now, we met with someone who's an international lawyer. And he said, how can I help? And I said, I know, I know a lot of families that, I know a lot of hostages. So he said, let's connect. So we connected to one of them. And his name is, um, well, <laughs> the, his name is Orlevi. So we connected with his mother, who knows Amnon. She grew up in the same uh Moshav in the same farm that Amnon's mother did, that Amnon did. Well, Amnon didn't grow up there because he was in the institution, yeah, but, but anyway, the family. And and her son is 33 years old, and he was taken hostage. And so we're on the Zoom, and the, the lawyer's on the Zoom, and his brother, his name is Michael, is on the Zoom. And then um, a lawyer from Israel. So we're all on this Zoom, and then I see the mother's like she's all excited. So I stopped for a minute and I said, oh, and they asked that they, that first they asked, can he get an American passport? So we said, but we'll work on an American passport, but there's American hostages like Hirsch and all these that they're not released. So maybe it's a waste of time. So the brother said, Michael said, maybe he can be known as, as, hum as humanitarian because he was at the Nova Festival and his wife was murdered in front of him. He was taken hostage, and his three-year-old son is uh, three-year-old son is is at home with a grandmother that's speaking to us, and like so now he's a father and a mother, and his three-year-old son does no idea what's going on, and and I'm thinking every everybody's humanitarian there, everybody you know they're like putting aside the the soldiers' age, like men, they'll bring them last. What it's it's, it's crazy. So if you're a man, you're 20 to 50, so you're going to stay That's there? last on the list, I guess, right? Yeah. So the mother is saying maybe he'll be known as humanitarian. And we're talking, this is like, you know, less than a month ago. And I, and I can't believe that we're, that we're talking this, you know, that we're even saying these words. Like we're talking and his, his wife was murdered in front of him and he's saying, Austin, in three. what kind of stories? Oh, my God. And then I'm saying to the mother, because I feel that she's get, getting very excited. And I say to her, you know, Geula, I don't want you to put your hopes up because because I we have no idea if, if he can help this uh, judge or this lawyer who's international because, because we're dealing with the Hamas, you know? <laughs> Nothing is uh, normal with them. So she said to me, this is a beautiful sentence, she said to me, the fact that you are on the other side of the world, you're saying my son's name, you're thinking about him. The lawyer's thinking about him. Let's me breathe wider right now. I was saying, wow. So all these prayers and that we're saying the hostages' names and we're thinking of them and we're praying for them, it means a lot to these people that they're not forgotten. So that was, uh, and I also want to share something so I don't forget it. I don't know if I told you this, but about the, the seniors, yeah, I told you this already. Did you? Well, you can tell me again so that everybody else can hear it. <laughs> yeah. So that we perform for seniors from Sderot. If I told you, then just cut me off. Um, I don't know if I told you this before. Not on this episode. This is when we were at the in DC. Yeah, yeah when we were there in DC. I think, I think I told you, but okay, so I'll tell you. So just before we came here, like about two weeks before we flew, because Israel is our home. We're there all the time. Besides the time we fly out to perform, but um, we performed for like seniors, but real seniors, not like uh, 55 plus that they have here, like seniors in their 80s and 
90s that were evacuated from Sderot and and we performed for them um, at the end, Lu Yehi, may it be. Lu Yehi, it's in Hebrew, it's uh, like, let it be, may it be, like for a prayer. And they were all signing with us and it was very optimistic and it was very uplifting. And then at the end, I walked over to like this 92-year-old woman and I said to her, um, how are you so optimistic? You know, you know, you went through the worst thing of all. How are you optimistic? So she said, we survived. So we have two things to do in our life now. One, to live, and two, to help other people. Wow. That summarizes everything, you know? Yep. So what I find when we perform here and do everything that we do, and I really feel that we're bringing a, this beautiful message of art and acceptance. But now we have another thing and I can't protect Israel enough, but all I can do is share my stories and talk about humanity and talk about that. We don't want everybody there dead. So people will understand. Um, by the way, when this, uh, when this deaf woman in New Zealand was telling me and tell your government, da, 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 da. so I wrote to her <laughs> like, I like I'm writing to a four year old girl. Imagine you're sitting in New Zealand and suddenly you're being bombed from Australia, but it's not the Australians bombing, bombing you, that's terrorists sitting in Australia and they don't want your land specifically. They just want to kill you and kidnap your children. So she, what? I said, yeah, that's, that's more or less what we're feeling here. That was so, an analogy. Yeah. Anyway, well, so I, yeah. I was just going to say that, that, you know, everything that you've been doing up till October 6th, it seems to personify what that, that elderly woman told you that, that you're alive and you bring goodness to the people, the, especially people that need it the most, um, the underserved, the sort of forgotten, um, folks that are in silence that, are missing out because no one reaches in towards them. So what you're doing is beautiful. And now you have the added, I guess, task within your mission to not just be the, the Israeli ambassadors of, of culture and acceptance, um, which is a good task and it's a task you won't ever fail to do, but now you're also bringing to the world, the truth about Israelis, about your culture, um, the mindset of Israelis. I mean, your your daughter, you said she served, and I'm assuming your son probably served in the IDF. Um, oh, yeah. And so now you've got you you've got in your own family more stories of of soldiers that aren't just soldiers. They're they're citizens, they're family members, you know, I don't know if they're married or, or not yet, but a lot of the IDF membership is our husbands and wives and fathers and mothers. And they're fighting for not what it's not because they hate something in front of them. They're fighting because of what they love that's behind them. And that's the opposite of the terrorists. And, yeah. um, and what you do alongside that, your fight is just bringing that compassion, that empathy, and that light to a community of people that may not have otherwise seen it. Even communities, as you mentioned, that never, that have no Jewish membership in it. So you're going into a community of children, deaf children, or children with other issues, and none of them are Jewish. But now their first experience with Israelis is a beautiful one. And that's what they're going to remember. And that's what they're going to take out into their world. The Israelis are good, beautiful people. So, so, most of the people that we speak to, that we deal with, have no idea what, where Israel is. Have you need no to get idea, a map out. I <laughs> have no idea what Jewish is, even. Because we're saying, what religion are you? Jewish, what? I say wow. Jewish, Christian, B Buddhism, Muslim. No. Never heard of Jew. Never heard of the religion, so that's also surprising to me. We're not the center of the world, which is okay. <laughs> but but um, I'll also tell one quick story. When we were were part of the Freedom Riders Foundation, and, and we were here uh, four months ago in California, we were uh, invited to dance for a, a hundred year old Holocaust survivor, and uh, 
a beautiful life in sign language. And after we're walking down, there's like a boardwalk there in Long Beach. And I see this girl holding um, 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 something, say Palestine or something, uh, whatever. A so, protesting sign of some sort that's... Yeah. Supporting Palestine. So and and she was gay because she was holding a little gay flag and she was wearing all the colors of gay and you can tell, you know, anyway. So I'm walking up to her and I say to her, um, excuse me, where is Palestine? And she goes like she um because I want to explain to her there's not a country right now named Palestine. There's Palestinians here and there. And I go I said to her, I'm from Israel, and she goes, Oh, you, you, you. And I said, What? I said, by the way. You know, uh, you're obviously gay, yes? And she says, yes. If you were to walk into Gaza, where uh, the Palestinians live, I said, they'd cut your balls off. <laughs> I said, what? I said, there's no acceptance there of gay or anything that's different. She said, really? And she put down her sign. So I said, I'm educating people like one by one. <laughs> That, well, that's all we can do is one by one. So that's one more that learned the truth. So that's but also I find I find that I can't I can't protect all the way and say against even a lot of people that are friends of mine, you know, Facebook, but real friends write to me these horrible things, and I can't. I just sort of all I can do is do do the good that we do because there there's so much hate. I can't. I can't acknowledge it. It's 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 too heavy for me. It is. It's too heavy. But but the the hate. I I had a um a good friend that lives nearby. He's a Chabad rabbi, and he just puts it so simply that you just keep shining the light, right? Be the light, um, whether it's through the dancing or through other acts of charity or through helping a neighbor or having a conversation, a gentle conversation so that people can learn the truth. And so I feel like, I feel like when I come here and I'm speaking to people, people have no idea that are, there are hostages held. And I feel like we're living in two parallel worlds and maybe the history will come out one day and they'll see what I see. And uh, that's that's all I can do because I found, found myself like being, you know, so it's so tiring. Like I was, because I was speaking to people that I thought were my friends, you know, either on the phone or face to face. And they were telling me such harsh things. And I also in the, in my late past was in the past, I was an officer in the Israeli army. I was even, I even thought I'd stay in because I did a really interesting and good job. And I thought I'd stay in a long time, you know, and continue. But then I had a chance to work with the dolphins. So I moved to that. Sure. <laughs> and anyway, but I, I know our army, you know, I have so many friends who have children in the army. Uh, my children, our children were in the army. I know how humane our army is. And our daughter would tell us, you know, when they bring in like, um, terrorists or non-terrorists from that tried to cross the border and they'd come into their, they'd sit them down and they would bring, first they'd bring them water, mm -hmm. you know, before they would interrogate if they're this or that. Because And almost all the people from Berry and friends of ours that were murdered were peace lovers and maybe even left more than I'm left, left on the, you know, political side. Right. And not not even because I'm I'm left, but not extreme. I'm never extreme to each any side. I don't believe in extremity. But <laughs> both of us, yeah, were, you know, accepting. But so many of these people were those people that would bring in Palestinians, drive them to the hospitals, and drive them to um art classes and to work and it's it's just un unbelievable. And also one, one short story that happened uh, about six or seven years ago, we were performing in Vienna at the UN. And then we were asked to perform in Munich at this huge JCC community because she said two worlds is exactly what I need now because man, woman, deaf hearing, Israel, Germany, it fit in every... Uh, the dichotomies, yeah. Yeah. So we came and... The timing was when all the refugees were leaving Syria. Mm. 
So the, I guess it was about six years ago when, you know, there were all these refugees that went into, and, and Germany was like the, the promised land because everybody could go there. So the train was like blasted crazy. It was like you couldn't, very un-European, you know. <laughs> People were smoking on the train. <laughs> when they'd stop, the train would continue. No, nothing was, you know, regular. But we're sitting on the train and we had all our luggage because we came from Vienna. And we see from this, this young couple from far away, they're wearing like this huge Christian cross. And on the cross, there's also the sign of the ear, like deafness, you know. So Amnon calls them and he so shows them that he's deaf. And now he knows American Sign Language. Okay. She, she knows American Sign Language from television. So Amnon is translating for me and she's translating uh, to her husband. They're really young, like they're in their 20s. And Amnon says to them, we're from Israel. And she says, we love Israel. Oh. The world doesn't know, but you always save us and bring us into your hospitals. We love Israel. It was like, mm -hmm. I have to record this and show the world. You exactly. Know? Exactly. Yeah. No, I remember that period in history. I did some reports about um, the Syrian refugees coming to the Israeli border and and um, the soldiers bringing them in and giving them medical care and, and helping, um, you know, women, yeah. children, et cetera, and that the world didn't decide to report on, on all of that. I did, but the world didn't. So, so it's wonderful what you're doing. And it's wonderful that, you know, even when you're traveling around and you're doing your, your workshops and you're helping in that capacity, just when you're on your off time and having meals with different people or out in the community, the restaurant or taking a walk that you can share just share the reality of of your experience as Israelis, as um, just citizens who know your own culture and the heart of your culture. You know, no no country's perfect, but that doesn't mean it's. I would say that with all the disagreements and 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 um, in a free society that free societies have, Israel can definitely be demonstrated as one of those societies that does its best, even admits their internal disagreements to just do right by the world and do right by their neighbors, even when their neighbors are attacking them. It's it's unprecedented. And and um, we one of our missions at the Jerusalem Connection is to make sure that that truth is told however we can tell it and giving you a platform here to tell it. I, I have the shivers now. Is, yeah. is important for us because that's one of our goals is to get as much firsthand information out into the community. And and you guys are firsthand um, witnesses to everything from your perspective through your work, um, as well as, as your um, experiences since October 7th, but also your experiences before that. Um, do you mind before we finish up uh, two things? Is there anything you can tell us about how your uh, family or communities are feeling right now? Um, here in early August, there's a lot of tension with Iran. You, you're in California at the moment, um, but I know you're very close with your your family and friends in Israel. You communicate, I'm sure, very frequently. Is there anything you can report back to us so that we can be praying and doing whatever we can, including contacting our elected officials to make sure that America is doing its part on that on that greater scale? And then also... Um, Share with us how to say a few things in in sign language. Um, shalom. And um, I'll, I'll sh can I can I tell you one more short story? Yes, before? sure, sure. Uh, something that happened in Kenya and Africa, because we we're around the world and we're told never to speak about politics or anything, which we anyway we don't. But we were performing for uh, four hundred teachers that are going to work with disabled kids, and we did a like a full performance, and the Israeli ambassador was there. And he told me, don't speak anything political. But then they were raising hands, all of them, asking questions. And one of them raised his hand and started asking me. I didn't even understand it very well because he had a very heavy African accent. But he was saying, Hezbollah, Hamas, this and that. And then I said, wait, wait. First of all, I want to answer that. I want to tell you that because our daughter was in the army exactly at the time. Our daughter's on the border of Gaza. Our army is very humane. And then I just sort of, I saw the 
the ambassador was all sweating. And then I changed and I said, you know what? We're artists. We're here to talk about peace. And you're going to be teachers for disabled kids. So why don't you pass on the message that as Amun was born disabled, he became he a whole world of dance and art and, and giving. So why don't you pass on that message to all the children that you're going to teach? So they all uh, clapped hands. It was like a whew. Yep. Yep. And now I'll, I'll share with you about our situation. Um, I, I want to say that when you're in Israel, it's, it's, it's not as bad because when you're in the country, you're less nervous, but it, but it's not true right now mm -mm. because what had happened since October 7th um, for months, I couldn't like shower or eat as, as usual because all, all the time you have to run into a, uh, Oh, shelter. And nothing is normal. You hear like a motorcycle coming by and you jump because, uh, and we drove around a lot. Amnon is very relaxed, nothing to do with the deafness. It's just who he is. And we see bombs over us and I'm, I'm petrified because we're driving after we perform for evacuating and I don't know what to do if to stop in the street or to continue. And Amnon is relaxed, like we're, we're being protected and that's how he feels. And he's, so super calm and it's amazing and and that's what had happened but when we were there a few months ago when we were like sitting and waiting for all the drones to come in from iran i'm like in bed and i'm thinking what's going on this this isn't normal this isn't normal we is this the end of the world that's what i was and then i stopped and i said i can't be afraid all the time i have to a little bit disconnect myself from the media because the media always is super scary and and it doesn't help, you know. And I decided the whole time only to watch stories that are inspiring and of heroes and people that were saved and not to watch any of the horrible stuff because it's too much information. And as it was, we experienced it so close, you know, everything right. was so near. And I was asking my my mother's husband's son, are you guys, what's happening? Because they're from Bailey. So he's saying, um, the father of my wife was killed. His mother was injured, but everyone else is okay. And I'm saying, what, what kind of a message is that? What kind of a text message is that? Yeah. Then we come to visit them for the Shiva, which is, you know, the seven days of mourning. Mm -hmm. And I come up and they're telling me this story and, and I just can't believe their story. Like he tried to protect his wife, the mother of the, his, he tried to protect her. They both were shot. He was killed. She hid somewhere for hours and hours. They're in their eighties. Yes. Wow. Their son, their son was on two houses. He, was, he happened to be on, on the rooftop and he was watching everything and a terrorist come up to him and he's, and he's, He's about to shoot him, the son, the brother of, and he's like, and they're looking eye to eye, and he's saying to him, no, and he left, the terrorist left, and he survived, you know, but the father was shot, the mother who's 80 was shot through here, she, like, heroes, I can't even start to tell you, she's, and then they sent in a helicopter to take her away because she's one of the founders of the kibbutz. She's like a very important person. And she says, no, I'm not wounded so bad. Take the others. Wow. Just saw her husband. And, and the stories, I just, I just can't believe the stories. So everything is so close to us. Everything. Yeah. So we, I, I'm proud to tell the hero stories of the people that saved other people because it's just unbelievable, the stories. And when we were th with the Freedom Riders, I couldn't share our story because there were people anti there. And I wanted to share it, you know, with the microphone as I did on the Zoom. But I was asked to share it in small, small. So I took the microphone and I said, I can't share our story now. But in a way, we're survivors, so I'll tell you the stories in a few years. So, and so shall I share um, a few words in sign language? Please. Or is there anything else that uh, we should add on to? Um, 
If you think of something that you want us to know that we haven't talked about, I am going to share all the resources um, so people can find you and find information about you. Um, I wrote down a few things. I'm going to make sure the link to the the music, um, the the thousand uh, musician um, concert or recording for the. Um, but I just I just want our audience to just know who you are, know your story, and have just more information to turn around and share because the truth of Israelis, Israeli society, the Israelis' heart. Um, whether it's the IDF members or the Freedom Rider teachers and everybody in between, it, it's such a blessing for the whole world. And it, it breaks our heart that the larger media doesn't see it. And then, you know, there's a lot of people that sit in ignorance and, and that's that's OK. But if they're sitting in ignorance and also propagating the lies that are out there, um, you know, as Christians, we want to stand in front of that. And we don't want you to feel like you're alone in telling your story. It's your story to tell, but we want to make sure it's amplified out as much as possible. So it reaches the most people as possible. So um, that is, that is so, that's so beautiful. <laughs> Thank and, you so much. Uh, we just, we just want you to know that we, we pray, we pray for your country and we pray for your people and now that we know you, we can pray for you. And as you said, the names, we post the names of um, hostages and we talk to hostage family members whenever we can. And we have their stories relayed out and your name and your work is, is as important as all of that, because that's what just gets the world connected to you. And we want to make sure those connections are solid and and we've heard too many of our Jewish friends, whether they're in Israel or here in America or elsewhere, feel alone. And that breaks our hearts if you feel alone in that darkness. And um, so that's why we wanted to make sure we had you on and and heard as many stories as you were willing to tell because it's it's history and and we want it on the record and we want it in people's hearts and minds. So, so what I'll, I'll add on that. Uh, I just spoke to our children that they're big, but they live in our house, in our apartment. Um, if they're nervous, but it's, they're okay. They're, they're okay. But ev everybody's so tense. It's, it's, it's not a normal life when you're thinking that you're going to be attacked and, Will you get to the shelter on time? And if you're alone, if you're not alone, it's 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 nerve wracking. It's you know when we flew out here and I suddenly went to the beach and felt and there's no sirens. It's suddenly like oh there's there's a, there's a normal life. I want that back, you know. Yeah. And um, we were invited like to uh, this place in Santa Barbara, which was just so beautiful. And I start crying there. I was sitting and crying because like. Where do I belong? I was born here. My my parents were born here, uh, but I grew up in Israel. Our children were born in Israel. Where's my home? And I, I started crying because I felt so peaceful and relaxed. And I was drinking this smoothie. And Israel, there's so much suffering, and so many of of my friends have been suffering and are suffering. And and it's hard for me to detach. But I. Two things. First of all, Amon said to me, both worlds, we can have both worlds, which I really like that answer. That's we can good. have two worlds, which was good. And also I thought, you know, if I suffer and I'm crying and I'm and I can't sleep well, I'm not helping anybody. <laughs> so that doesn't help. That's what true. you do is helping. What I do is helping spread out the word. That's what we're here. We're here to help, that's for sure. So let us let us um and learning something that that is unique to um, that well, I'm, some of our viewers and listeners may know some sign language, but can you teach us something that that is close to your heart? Yes. Yeah, so first of all, a, a sentence uh, in Hebrew with song, "Me and you will change the world." So we'll just sort of do it together. So it's ani, ani, vata, me and you, neshene will change. Etaolam, the world. Ani veata, me and you. As yavo, kvav, kulam. Everybody will join. Amru etze, someone said this before me. 
before me, לא משנה, it doesn't matter, because me and you will change the world. So I'm going to sing it one time, and we'll do it together. Ready? אני ואתה נשנה את העולם. You can do it with me. אני ואתה, אז יבואו כבר כולם. אמרו את זה קודם, לפניי, לא משנה. אני ואתה נשנה את העולם. And the last thing is, עולם, by the way, starts with עין, the, the letter עין, so that's why it's עולם. In American Sign Language, it's world, so it's a W, so it's a little bit different. Okay. Okay. So the last thing is the word shalom. So we take both of our hands, we put them together, shalom. We put them on our hearts, ask for something, a prayer for ourselves or for our community or for anyone. And then we like to greet each other with the word shalom. 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 Mm-hmm. So, so we're yeah. going to remember that. Thank you so much. Thank um, you. Israel, hi. Can we do that? Thank you. Um, um, Israel, hi. Hi. Beautiful. Thank you. Thank you so much. And um, again, we'll be sharing all of your resources and, and ways for folks to find you and learn about you in the notes. And I'll provide the links. Uh, everybody can copy those down. Shavua Tov. Shavua Tov. If you want me to connect you to hostage families, write to me and let me know, okay? Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.